Hello, everybody. Welcome to another episode of Dungeon Boys. My name is Keith, and I am your DM. Josh playing as the ever lovable Arlo. Zine is playing as Brim. And this is Bryce playing as Jack Law. <laughs> You're always starting a radio show. Whenever, <laughs> like, I, I start as the host, and it seems like Jack takes up the hosting at the end, like, this is actually my show. <laughs> <laughs> but welcome back to Dungeon Boys. We are recording again. We are in a, a different location, not a new or permanent location recording. <clears throat> but we do have air conditioning here in the South Carolina July. We are we here in Studio B. Yeah, we mm. praise the good Lord for the AC in Studio B. Uh, that's a lot of letters. But we're back playing Dungeons and Dragons. Last time, the party fought a cursed, a cursed gnome. It turned into a hulking abomination creature and really gave them a run for their money. Uh, pretty much destroyed the boat they were on in the middle. We won't call it in the middle of the ocean, but in the middle or towards the end of their journey across the channel uh, to Buckland, to the Round Isle. This is where they're headed. Now, legitimately... We didn't almost destroy the boat. Yeah, it wasn't your fault this time. This time. Yeah. Maybe next time. This but... time, really, uh, you didn't provoke this outcome. It was really not your fault this time. Yeah. Which is a refreshment, I would say, probably for our audience. We Just are. Kidding. We are um, trying to get better on our or our uh, not destroying everybody in sight kind of thing. It's, it's a lot of people died on that ship, <clears throat> but it wasn't it's your fault. fault. Yeah, it wasn't your fault. So now they are in. They are have all just hopped into a lifeboat that Misiko had prepared for their escape. Uh, it is Burb, Misiko, Grim, Jack, and Arlo. Grim uh, will now drank, be referred to as Baby Legs. Yeah, ba- old oh, Baby Legs <laughs> <laughs> drank a cursed potion or a, uh, an expired potion, and his all of his limbs <clears throat> shrunk down to be shorter than they should be. Um, which is a, a magical effect of the, the potion. Uh, we'll see if that wears off or what they have to do to deal with that. But he has currently made himself into a disguised version of himself. Um, but we will deal with, with uh, his legs and arms uh, momentarily. I can see like you've shrunk down, but like they're still like really muscular. <laughs> <laughs> Just like cones. <laughs> it's, it's not like they've atrophied or anything. I can't, still, like, I can't move them though. It's just... <laughs> I have to twist my whole torso. You're, to a, you're a strange, <laughs> fleshy starfish. <laughs> That's not true. <laughs> That's pretty nasty. Um, but anyway, you guys are on this 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 uh, lifeboat, and Misiko uh, doesn't really know how to sail it very well, um, and so Misiko says, "Jack, we are probably eight to, to ten hours from Buckland. Uh, we may get there before dark. Yeah, but I'm not sure how to sail this thing. I can move it." Not so quite as deftly as you. I know you read that book earlier. Yes, I'll take care of it. Book. Okay, book. so he, he, he gets off the rudder uh, and heads over and sits on another seat um, and kind of looks out towards the, the horizon and he points. Buckland is that way. The round aisle. Keep going the way the other ship was going. I will Follow do. that ship? I'm not trying to condescend. Do we see the ship? Uh, at this point, I would say your dealings with getting that chest, which I and also they got a chest out of Ooh. Captain Talazar's captain's quarters. Uh, I would say in this amount of time, the ship has kind of sailed out of sight, but you could see it kind of veering off and going un, untethered in a direction that is not the direction that it was traveling. But it is no longer visible; it's out of sight. Veering off course. I travel that way. Okay. An old two feet. <laughs> yeah. All right, so um, we're here. Uh, Burb oh, oh, comes up over. You can hear oh, Burb over some there. of the rest of the clamor, and he says, "Everyone, okay? Right as rain, Burb. How are you? You you were you trying to do a thumbs up were, with like little baby arm? No, I'm I'm disguised, so it looks. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm still laying on the ground though, <laughs> so my arms like twisted back <laughs> around with thumbs up, still yeah. speaking into the boards. Yeah. You were almost dead, though. How, how are you? Uh, Burb not remember what happened to Burb. In, what, ha- what happened to Burb? You, you went missing once we got up on the ship. We wasn't real sure where you went to. We, we, we looked all over the place, every, everywhere we could. And there was just scratches and all kinds of stuff. I mean, we, we just couldn't find nowhere. Where, where were you at? I woke up ble- bleeding in, in Big Cup on front of boat. I roll out 
And that's when I found sea all on the, on deck. I've heard these things happen on cruises. I not want to cruise again. Although I, I, mm. Jack, do you have words? None. <laughs> <laughs> I have no words for the situation. Well, how are you now, Burb? Are you okay? Burb, all right. Excellent. No, Burb, I, I do think that in the midst of battle, I think I saw your sword go off the edge of the boat. What? <laughs> well, I'm I'm just saying we we need we need to find you some kind of hardware once we get on the dry land because I. I your 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 sword for yeah I think it's done been lost. Uh, Bird pats his his sides and he says, "Where bird money?" Oh, <laughs> I, I I I ain't I ain't got no money. In fact, you you had some of mine. I had Burb had all your money too. Burb, you, you had you had you had some of my money. What you? Did you did you lose the money, Burb? Burb stares off <laughs> into the sea for a moment. <laughs> he pats himself down one last time. He says, "Not lost, dropped." <laughs> <laughs> oh, you think you dropped it on that boat over there, Jack? See if you can kind of steer us toward that boat over there. Think dropped in ocean. Oh, we we on the ocean right now. Yeah, we should we should be able to find it in the next. Couple hundred thousand years. I'm afraid we've already passed wherever it would have dropped. Oh, gone it. Burb is not happy about this. <clears throat> Burb is very sad to realize he has lost all his money, <laughs> uh, and he like turns to like pull push his head over the side of the boat, and it, he just at this point he's just futilely looking <laughs> into the ocean as you guys, you know, move across. He doesn't want to talk. He's he's upset. He's he's depressed, and he's depressed that he let you down. By dropping hit your money into the ocean. I want to. I want to go up to Burb and, and and just like put my Arlo-ish arm around mm-hmm. him. Burb, Burb, look, look. It, it it was a bit of money that was lost, but that's that's all right. I mean, we we got out of this thing all right. You know, all he's looking over at Grim saying, <laughs> "It's all right." <laughs> we we got out of this all right. Um, I'm gonna flop onto my back at this point. Okay, it's like a fish. Just <laughs> we um. We, we, we didn't get out completely. I mean, we got the box. It's got something in there. I mean, oh, it might yeah. have something in it. I've got a bag of scales as well. Yeah, yeah. Um, Grim, he got some scales. I got some scales too. So, um, you know, we, we might be able to kind of recuperate some of the expenses a little bit. Wait, how many scales do you so, I think I marked it down. Burb responds with, so, Burb, not poor oh, again? Uh, well, I don't, we don't know how much all this going to be worth. And we don't know what's in the box, neither. So. You you will get a cut, Burb. There's always <clears> money <throat> to be made in the future. So Burb's still rich? D- not rich per se, but you're not dirt poor. Burb's oh. still rich! He <laughs> looks off to the, the side of the boat and sticks his kinku fist up in the air. Burb, Burb oh. you always be uh, okay. rich with friends with this group. Want to be rich with money, <laughs> but enjoy friends. I completely sympathize. <laughs> All right, are there any other conversations or anything you want to have on this boat before we... I want to look at the chest. Okay. You examine the chest. It is locked <laughs> what with a the... lock that looks similar to the ones that Jack had uh, had, had before. Oh boy. Jack, how did you get these locks off? I was under a great deal of strain. Hopefully I can do it again. Grim, strain him. I don't come here. <laughs> <laughs> I will give it a shot, I suppose. Could you steer the boat while I attempt this? Just keep us heading in that direction. Sure. I'll tell you if we're getting off course. Okay. <laughs> Do I need to roll for it? Uh, no, you, you're good. You're just traveling straight. Just breaking the rules just a little bit, but sure. it's okay. <laughs> I'm gonna try and open the chest. Okay. It's a. Yeah, it'll be a combination lock. slot that you'll have to pick for a side of hand thing, right? Mm, I'm gonna use my luck point. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's uh, what do we what do we call this? Was this sleight of hand? Yeah. All right. Sleight of hand. He's gonna open up this lock and see what's inside this. Arlo goes yes. over there and just rolls three and that twenties. Oh look at that! Hey, I did it! <laughs> <laughs> I looked at it really sternly. It just opened. <clears throat> 
So while you're rolling, like Grim, How do I find this stuff? Grim has no proficiency <laughs> with with watercraft. Right? We're gonna treat this for the sake of what Dude. I'm trying to do with. Really? This is just traveling there. Um, there's there's okay. not a whole lot that's gonna happen on, in between. Uh, so the the fact that Jack told him like I'll tell you if you get off course and we're gonna treat that as. Like if you ask if you ask him to do a you know a triple three sixty or you know to guide you to a different city, you probably couldn't do that. I but. could just see in like extreme D and D rules. Like as soon as he grabs the tiller on the boat, like begins something to just like starts lighting on fire. <laughs> it begins to sink. <laughs> um, what was your roll, Bryce? Twenty one. Then yes, you're able to after click, click. it takes you a few minutes, but you you roll the Wipe and tumblers and. You hear him finally click into place, uh, and then, yep, you, the lock is open. I open the chest. <laughs> the chest didn't in make the, that noise. You it's, made that noise. The chest, Jack is doing the, the chest is, it was really heavy when you grabbed it. <coughs> uh, and the chest, when opened, reveals an orangish, goldish light, much like in Pulp Fiction whenever they open up the briefcase. It's just full of it's it's the strong box from the you know the the merchant vessel it's the the cash they were carrying so it's just gold pieces and and gold it, it's just full of gold man it's uh, just Jack what what you got over there uh it appears to be a box of money oh cool. hey Bird we we only found some of that money we were looking for. Hmm. Woo! <laughs> Come on, friend! All right! And Verb comes over there and starts, you know, rifling through the gold. I'm going to take the lock off the box. Okay. Hey. Slip, slip it in that pocket? Yep. Verb just begins, you know, letting the gold <clears throat> fall through his hands. He's very excited. Misiko says, why, that is a great deal of fun. All right, Burb, uh, maybe just sit in the middle of the boat away from the edge. Don't, he, don't want to go losing none of that. He again. does grab a handful and cradles it as he goes to sit right. on the boat, on, on, on the seat. Burb, I think we've all learned that. Would you mind counting it out for us and letting us know how much it is? Sure. <laughs> uh, so over the course of your travels, Burb counts it out, and through his, you know, his uh, reasonable experience with sea and gold, he can value these larger pieces or whatever. Uh, and there seems to be a thousand, about a thousand gold pieces in there, Ooh, the equivalent boy, of yeah. a thousand. So, cool beans. How do we? Burp says, I counted it. I get biggest cut. No. All right. It's an even split, Burb. So, what is that, 200 for all of us? I think we should divide it up based on arm length. <laughs> <laughs> Should I use the mask and just 20 foot on? <laughs> oh, yeah. We should do that, Jack. All right, so you guys defied the gold, and you continue sailing towards Buckland, no? Misiko, yeah, how do we... I, 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 guess... I think that Misiko should get a, a bit of this. He got my trident. He doesn't get any. He killed Burp. He did. He, <laughs> he killed Burp. He killed Burp. Wait, wait, he is did. this conversation did. happening uh, <laughs> in front prepare, of him? He did prepare this boat that we currently sit in. It's true, but I don't trust him. I feel like you can't be having this conversation outside of the game. All right. Well, I definitely <laughs> didn't say the, the right. Part yeah, of course. Burp. Yeah. You said that I don't trust him. Part right in front oh, of me. Oh yeah, that. definitely. <laughs> yeah. Misiko like pulls himself in a He's little bit. He's pointing at him. <laughs> I don't trust this one. I have I have proven myself. No, you haven't. I have helped. You've I been have, suspicious the whole way. I have gotten us here. I, I, I gotta say, we, we, would, we wouldn't be floating around in this handy little floaty boat if it wasn't for, uh, for me, Zico, so uh, I, I vote that you know, he should get a, get a cut of the share. It will go a long way to getting me back to my wife and child. You got, yeah, I'm you gonna got, roll inside on his yeah. wife and child part. Okay. Are you telling the truth about this? I want <clears> to believe That's a 24. You. Good gracious. gracious. There's some, there gracious. seems to be... Whenever he says wife and child, there's a tinge of something in there that it doesn't seem like that that doesn't seem um completely accurate that he's saying well, like, when he says wife and child you get this like uh this is actually going to be back it, pay for alimony. It feels forced. It feels it feels kind of like forced care. <laughs> Just walk over to him with my hand on his shoulder. Misko, are you is your marriage okay? <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't do that, but I yep. am Misko, if you don't tell me the truth, I'm going to throw you off this boat. Yeah, I mean, 
he would do it too. Okay. I haven't been completely honest with you. I don't have a wife and child. I live by myself and I thought if I made up a story about having a wife and child that you would more easily and be willing to take me along. But I'm not exactly the most, you know, easy on the eyes. I, I look like a snake. People don't like snakes. I didn't think you would let me join up with you if I didn't have some sort of sob story. But I'm really just a poor man who lives in the forest, making my crafts. Welcome to my world, buddy. He seems genuine on that one. Seems genuine. Seems, ge seems genuine. <clears throat> that story would have been just fine with any of us if you had just told us that in the beginning. I am so ugly. <laughs> <laughs> I know how you feel, buddy. That's a personal you... issue. That's not something we can help you with. But you know what? You know what? Mexico, I got something that, that you need to check out. And I, I reach in my bag. I pull out the mirror. The mi was it a mirror yeah. of positive yeah. reinforcement? Mexico turns around and like, you hear him sniffle like, and he gives it back and like, there's a single tear in his eye. Thank you. He says, thank you. <laughs> and That's pretty good stuff in there, huh? It is. Yes, sir. All right, I'm gonna cut this thing short. Didn't expect to spend so much time on the on the uh, life raft. But we unless y'all have any big conversations, we're gonna time skip to the to uh, what's next. We need to decide how we're gonna divide up the money. There's a thousand gold pieces in three of us. That's not a division that works. There's a burb. Yeah. Yeah, I said burb. I mean, we can split it with the rest of them. Misiko says, "I'm willing to take less than." Less than a fifth. I have uh, not been with you this whole time, as and I can't say I did very good in the fight against Cursed Girl. And you did tell us fabrication about your uh, fake family. It is true. This is true. See, I told you. I told you not to trust him. I still tell you we're sitting in a boat to <clears throat> be prepared. It's fine. I have, now I have no problem sharing money with him. He told me the truth. I don't <laughs> hey, now we're we'll making some ground there. Good. I will remember that honesty is the best to policy. It is. With right. us, hey, fellas, fellas, let's, let's huddle real quick. First meeting, I told you I killed a man. You don't seem to be, you don't seem to hold that information too close to your chest. <laughs> but it's honest. <laughs> hey, you, <laughs> I killed a guy. <laughs> I'm just walking through the streets of Buckland. Hey! So, <laughs> finger guns are blazing. <laughs> Perhaps 250 to the three of us, and then Burb and Misiko can split the other 250? I mean, that's, that's fine with me. Burb, what you think? I agree with this, Jack. Burb, fine. I guess. All right. I think we done found it. Burb, Burb did spend most time un unconscious on boat trip. And lost your money you already had. And, he did, and Burb did drop money in ocean. Secretly, seems fair. Arlo is thinking, "Well, dang, I was sleeping most of that voyage too." Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so two fifty between you Misiko and Burb. We're gonna give Misiko a hundred and Burb one fifty. Okay, I like it. <clears throat> now, question. Yes. While we are on the floaty boat, en route to Buckland. Yep. How long does it take us to get there? About eight to ten hours. Eight to ten hours. Do I notice any other creatures or, or oceanic kind of life about? Nothing jumps up to greet you or anything. Okay. Yeah, well, that's um, probably a good thing. Yeah, uh, you don't really have the opportunity to observe a lot on the way. Okay. Um, I don't know if any of you need a rest, but I'm gonna I take definitely a, need a rest. I'm going to take a rest. Okay. I do not sleep. So Jack is going to sail you there, and everybody else is going to take a, a, full, a full rest as you float on the boat. Is yeah. that cool? All right. So we get there, we all passed out in the sun on the boat in the middle of the ocean. We're going to get there, we're going to be completely scorched on one it's, side. It's got a big sail. <laughs> Will this count as a long rest? Yeah. It's okay, it's so eight hours. can I, before this long rest starts, can I cast my new wizard spell that I got? Wizard. Guess so. I'm going to cast Find Familiar then. Nice. <laughs> and I'm a looking for a spider. spider crawls out of your mouth. A spider? Yeah, I was hoping it would just like come up from under one of the seats on the boat and just like crawl up my arm onto my shoulder. <laughs> well, if it was a real spider, yeah, I mean, we can, if you want to personify, you know, I, I think find familiar way. is like you find like a creature is like summoned to you, isn't it? 
or yeah. do you you it's like a spirit creature that you summon oh okay. yeah yeah i was just saying like if it were if you were making friends with a real spider it would be a very cool story or thing that there is a spider on the boat and it came and you know but it's, it's kind a of back there, like, spider. where the tiller's at he's kind of built like a little web up in there so you have a spider now yeah cool very cool he sits on your shoulder mm-hmm. nice so that takes what an hour <laughs> oh it's jack a spider <laughs> <laughs> don't worry i got you buddy <laughs> Uh, I will let you know. I'm just wondering. I don't care. It does take an hour. Unbeknownst to you, y'all just floated over like one of those giant 16-foot spider crabs. He's down there going like, what? <laughs> Why Big not voice. me? <laughs> yeah. Why not me? All right. So, you guys uh, wake up. Yeah, casting time one hour. Hey. Grim and Arlo, you guys are sleep. How are you guys sleeping in the boat? Duration is instantaneous. I am so like flat on my face. Like that. <laughs> I'm flat on my face, just up, up like near the bow of the boat. Okay. I am. Cool. I'm out. Grim, you face up, face down. Face up, but like I've got my head underneath one of the plank seats that I imagine this has to okay. protect myself from the harsh rays of the sun. Gotcha. Um, Jack is taking a thoughtful, head. forlorn expression while he has his arm resting on the little rudder thing. Okay. Captain Morgany. So, Grim, Misiko, and uh, Arlo are woken up by the following sound. <laughs> everyone! No, yeah, this is perfect. Everyone! Go, meant friends! It's snowing! <laughs> and you, everyone looks up. Jack, you already know this to be true. But as you awake, you fe- you can, and you look to the sky, you can feel a light snow falling on your face as you pull up to the coast of the round isle. Oh, I pulled the hood up. Nice. So you guys are coming into a dock. The large boat that you got on to come here is nowhere to be found. <clears throat> you pull up to a dock that is not particularly bustling with activity. It's not doesn't seem to be an extremely extravagant place, but there are plenty of places to dock your little life raft. Um, so I'm assuming Jack, you know, wheels in to one of the docks nearby and you know you guys tie off and looking up a hill you can see a great stone wall that wraps around the city that you believe to be Buckland and going from the docks you can see a pathway that goes up this hill and it's not like a mountainous hill it's just raised from the docks so imagine you know a kind of a flat area with and the elevation goes down a little bit to the sea um, from the docks, a road goes up and around to the left to what you imagine may be the gates of the city that face to the east. You have traveled south, and the gates of the city face to the east. Um, you can consult uh, your map on your phone if you have that picture, but it's just a big stone-walled city. Um, over the walls, you can see a few buildings that rise above the walls. Uh, and most buildings here seem to be made of... Uh, a combination of gray stone and just large planks of of brown, dark brown wood and like log cabin looking kind of buildings and stuff like they they construct a lot of their structures with just full uh, logs instead of cut timber or uh, cut like processed planks and such like that. Um, but you can see a little bit of that. You don't hear a lot going on, but there's you know there's reasonable activity on the docks as you pull up um, and. You pull up. You're there, on the docks. You've crossed the sea. Woohoo! I get out of the boat. <laughs> okay. Everybody, uh, Burb and Misiko are also in the process of getting out of the boat. I will also leave this boat. I am hopping out, but like, I've I've kind of ironically I've kind of enjoyed the journey. So this is the first <laughs> first first boat trip I've been on. So I'm gonna carry the empty trunk with me as well. Okay. Yeah. It's a pretty heavy trunk. Yeah, without it. the gold in it, it's fairly. It's it's, it's a it's a, like a strong box. It's pretty. Uh, it's a chunky it's, boy. It's pretty chunky. All right, I'll leave it there then. I mean, you can take it. It's just. I was just gonna go sell it. Gotcha. I was just notifying you that it it will it will be like a fifty sixty pound. I just leave it. Thing. Okay. Cool. Where is Jack's spider hanging out? Just on his shoulder. Okay. He lives in his ear. Jack, Ooh. Jack, 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 you gotta, I can't reach it. Grim, get that bug off his shoulder. No, mm-hmm. please leave it alone. It's fine. I summoned him here. Okay. <laughs> 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 that's, that's normal conversation in this world. <laughs> you see, indeed, these things happen. You summoned Spider? Yes. 
He is my new companion. You need new companion? I'm always yeah, looking I mean, for more new companions, babe. We found you, and that was one of the greatest days of our lives, wasn't it? Hmm. Do we split the gold with him? I'll, I'll give him a peace of mind. All right. <laughs> hey, this um, this spider bug got a name. Peter. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what yeah, is he's, he's got a name. <laughs> what what name? He hasn't told me yet. I'll let you know later. All right. <laughs> Come on, friends. Let's get in this city. Yes. I'm cold. I'm going to sell some scales. The first thing you realize is that it feels very, very cold. It is I've got biting. Fur on it my is coat. bitingly cold um, in this <clears throat> area. And you, you have you said what do you have on a coat? Werewolf. Okay. Fur. As well, I mean, my my coat's also kind of thick. Okay. Boy. Gotcha. So, how far down does your your coat go? Down it's to my grip. knees. To your knees. I would say your torso is pretty comfortable, but like your head and I guess if you got the hood on, you're probably fine. But like your legs feel very cold. Um, you you everybody feels as though Grim the least of all, but everybody feels as though you might want to pull on a few extra layers for yeah. being in this area. Ar- Arlo is not scaled for this kind of environment. So. But yeah, it is exceptionally cold <clears throat> in this area. It is snowing. So there's some ice chunks that kind of are, are washing up against the shore um, of little pieces of ice, and, and the snow is falling very lightly. It's not obscuring your vision or anything, but the snow is falling, and it's landing on the walls, and um, it's, a, it's a picturesque wintry scene as you walk up towards the city. Oh. Graham, do you, did I see you run up under the deck? Did you, did you get anything out of our little cart buggy? Just some scales. I, I, I got some of them, too. I got, got a couple books, too. I, if we can find somebody to uh, maybe offload all this stuff, I'd like to see if I can find a little, something a little bit warmer. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah. That would be a good idea. A little, little bit cold out here. Shopping is definitely first on my list of priorities. Actually, can I make a perception roll? Here. I want to look for. Uh, I want to look for um, our symbol, the servants of the scale symbol. Okay. And see if they have like maybe a resupply kind of thing in a major city like this. Hey. Something where their agents can go and equip for the area. Where are you looking? Like Just, on the docks. I mean, I want to look, kind of look around the city. Okay. Gotcha. You have uh, you yeah. guys have not made it inside yet or anything. Okay. So far, you haven't told me that you have left the docks. I we do not that way. Okay. Right. So we're walking towards the gates of the city. You're looking around. Okay. Um. Fifteen. Fifteen. Um. Nothing huge, but as you approach the gate of the city, um, your attention is kind of drawn away from the <coughs> gate because of what I'm about to describe. But before your attention is drawn away from from the actual gate, you can see on like the bottom right corner of the gate, you can see the the little you know crude triangle with the line down through its symbol of the servants, uh, kind of hidden, kind of carved into the gate of the city, um, only really visible to those who are looking for it. Sweet. But whenever you arrive at the gate of the city, so as you arrive at the gate, you're on this very well-worn pathway that comes up to the east side of the city. It connects with a a larger road that heads east away from the city. So you're coming up at like a perpendicular to a road. So you've got gate here. You guys are coming up. Got walls of a city like this and then a road that extends out. And sitting on that road are two carts carts that you recognize types of carts that you recognize lo and behold it's more army folk more more members of this orc army yeah. are standing at the gate but they're not paying any attention to you because they're paying attention <laughs> they're paying attention to us to a dwarf who is standing on top of the gate and he is looking down at them and he is saying the following uh, this dwarf has uh, blonde, uh, wavy blonde hair that is pulled back into like a tight, short ponytail on top of his head. He's got a vest that has that seems to have fur coming out from the sides of his vest, but there's no sleeves on it. He's got very intricate tattoos that go all the way down his both of his arms, and he has t- uh, two battle a- not battle axes but like hand axes, combat hand axes, strapped to his back. 
um, and he has some uh, blonde, you know, mustache double kind of beard. He looks like a rough and tumble guy. Um, he looks like he's not a young dwarf, but he's not an old dwarf. We call him middle aged. Hmm, um, seventy five. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's like a buck fifty, <laughs> you know, buck fifty, buck seventy five. Um, and you hear him say, "It has been but four days since the last calling." We will not permit you to overstep the agreed upon schedule for your lawless theft of good citizen the good citizens of Buckland. You will return to your cesspit of a stronghold east of here and return on the expected date, or there will be blood. <coughs> the orc mage. I like this character. Yeah. The orc mage responds You are making a mistake. Open the gate, or you are correct. There will be blood. There are but six of you. Your soulless husks may be able to use arcane designs, but you cannot hope to overcome our gate with but six. Uh, and the orc responds with, Will you not submit? He, uh, the orc on the thing responds, We demand only that, <clears throat> we demand that you only return at the agreed upon date one week hence. The orc says, Very well. Uh, and at this, each, um, the two I'm mage put orcs. my hand on Grim's shoulder and ask him to disguise me. <laughs> okay. Do you do that? Yeah. And I reach out a hand to Arlo as well and say, "Disguise time, Arlo." Huh? Do it. Think of a being, not no. Think of a dwarf. <coughs> Wait, what is what's the space of dwarf? Is Briar a dwarf? Yeah. Think of a human. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know too many of them. Just he turns picture, into Grim. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's thinking about Grim. <laughs> okay, I'm, I will become uh, just average human man guy. Okay. Cool. I, 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 the the I, I cook. Don't need a, I don't need disguise. I'm I'm all right. You. I'm, I push him into a bush. <laughs> <laughs> I push him off the path away okay. into somewhere hidden. Okay. That's a cliff on the other side of that bush. No, there, there, there's, some, there's some shrubbery around the edge of the wall. That's fine. Oh, stay quiet. Okay. The bush shakes back. Jeremiah so, and Hans Maytag. Jeremiah and Hans. Got I a forgot little, about Hans. A little Maytag. slouch going. <laughs> yeah, what was... He's, he's got like it's like the dishwasher or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's got long hair like Jesus from Walking yeah. Dead. Um, <laughs> there's this actor who's on commercials. He's like this frumpy looking dude. The one commercial I've seen is he, he's in the new um, series of Unfortunate Events. He like looks halfway between a man and a woman. And he's like this frumpy guy. He works at a carnival in a commercial. That's who I picture as Hans Maytag. I don't know his name. but I don't know either. I know who you're talking about, uh, though. God talks like this. <laughs> um, anyway, so the orc mage says, will you not submit? And Duncan all but spits on him. I said his name. You're, you'll find it out shortly. <laughs> but um, I guess if he you know, survives, what happens next? He's got a name but um, the dwarf all but spits on these orcs. And as he, you know, the one orc mage says, will you not submit? Over on the side of the wall, two groups of um, four archers on each side of Duncan stand up. Oh, dang it, <laughs> of the dwarf. They stand up and they point bows over the wall. Um, and as they're doing this, the two orc mages take out uh, what looks to be like a stone or some sort of like lozenge or tablet and they, they jam it in their mouths and you see them crunch down pretty vigorously. And as they do that, they begin to contort and transform and kind of grow in size. Uh, and then one of them like begins to, his flesh begins to take on the appearance of stone and some of the rocks from the ground kind of go up and wrap around him, and it looks like he transforms, and I, eventually... As that's happening, I, I want to look over to Jack. Are, are we going to fight, Jeremiah? Uh, I wouldn't say so. <laughs> Not oh, today. Man. The bush shakes back. Wait, right. what's happening with Burb? <clears throat> He's fine. He's in the other bush. Yeah, Burb, Burb does. He goes to the bush with you. Misiko says, What in the blue devil is this? Uh, and so he's the one mage is he's transforming and eventually uh, he rises to be a very a very large size and he looks to be an earth elemental it looks like he's made a transformation into like this big amalgamation of, of earth and rock um, if we have to I suppose 
Did I say earth? You say the word, man, and I'll drop I'm correct. a bomb. <laughs> <laughs> there was a lot of the word rock. Yeah, and then uh, the other one, the same thing happens, but with fire. And so now standing before the gate are extremely large, a fire elemental and an earth elemental that used to be orc mages. And then standing at their feet are four orky boys. Hmm. Just soldier men. <laughs> and they roar. Um, and uh, the dwarf on the wall says, Fire! <laughs> uh, and all the... Ding, 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 the... <laughs> the um, the soldiers near him, they knock arrows and begin to fire. So I'm going to have to start a little combat action. I cast Sickening Radiance in the middle of the orcs. All right, so let's. we need everybody to go into uh, some, some... We're going to initiative. initiate. Oh. <laughs> I'm going to do those Borderline. two archers in groups of four. <laughs> All right, Arlo, what you got? Lib. It was a 10 plus one, so you're right. It's borderline Okay. Level. Bryce, what you got? Borderline Lib. 14. Or, ooh, boy. And <coughs> uh, Grim, what you got? 17. Um, Burb calls out and he says, Burb, not have weapon. Burb, stay in bush. <laughs> All right, um, man. And Misiko says, I will protect Burb. And Misiko drops back to stand near Burb to make sure nothing happens to him. Um... But they're going to be in the initiative anyway. Oh man, Burb lost my crossbow. He didn't. Burb lost it all. You can buy 20 crossbows. He lost some of my cash. We got a lot of people in this combat. That's what makes it juicy. That's what makes it juicy with the wombat. Um, Grim, you'll be going first. Boy. You lucked out. Good cool. job. Um, let's see. So the new spider's kind of cool because it has the web sense thing. So if I give him time to build a web, then anything that passes through that web, he knows about it. If you cast web, would that also apply? I don't know. Is that a thing? Can I cast web? It's a, sp- it's a wizard yeah. spell. Just question. What's, I can what's like your highest man. hit points? Like what, what's your all's max hit points? Mine? 66. 89. Okay, yeah, I just wanted to make what? sure you no. get it. <laughs> got 69. Get a bead on what's going on here. Wait, how much is yours, Josh? 66. Good lord. Hey, I'm sturdy. He, he a chunk boy. Made of <laughs> chunk. I'm just, I'm condensed down into a, okay. a bite-sized Arlo-ish bit. We're almost set up here. Apologies. I oh, got shoot. them I 49 HPs. Mm. I thought you'd have a little bit more. We all use D8s. No, you don't. You got, he's got a wizard, so it took it down to a D6 for a level. I got gotcha. you. Either way, I got maxed on that. That's true. I take the average for most of them. Mm, that's about right. I just rolled mine. What's the average for a D8? I think it's five. So yeah, because D6 is four. Sorry, folks. Don't mean to be taking so long to get this set up, but we got a lot of people to discuss here. No, you're good. So Those five times people. seven levels would be thirty-five. Plus six would put me at forty-one. So I've gotten a little bit better rolls than average. Y'all just. Cheated. Constitution? Yeah, y'all have Constitution. Okay. Yeah, we All right, plus two I'm going to do my best to take care of this and right. do this combat so pretty well. Plus two times well. eight is 16 more. <clears throat> um, I got zero Constitution. Okay, so Grim, it's your turn. Yeah, boy. Uh, now remember, uh, in, in your disguise, you can't use your powers, right? So if you cast, your disguise will... Okay, <gasps> I'd let it fade away then. Okay. Uh, I cast oh. Sickening Radiance. How far away are they? Um, you guys are probably within 60 feet of these light. You guys got Ooh. pretty close as you walked up. Got a range of 120. My spider nice. didn't disappear when I disguised, right? No, it's still there. Okay. Um, 
Dim light spreads within a 30-foot radius sphere centered on a point within range. The light spreads around corners. When a creature moves into the area for the, uh, for the first time on a turn or starts its turn there, you must pass a constitution save or take 4d10 radiant damage, suffer one level of exhaustion, and emit a dim light in a 5-foot radius that prevents some visibility. The light and exhaustion go away when the spell ends, but it's got a 10-minute duration. Okay. D is going to be dead. All right, and what's the big radius? Uh, you said 30 feet? 30 foot radius, so it's a 60 foot sphere or circle? It's a sphere. 30 foot radius? Okay, so yeah, they're all in it. All six of them. Uh, so and I'm to roll? Yeah, constitution save. Okay. Um, Clunk. Got a 14. What's my thing? Uh, what'd you get? 14 and a 16. Uh, the 16 wins, but 14 matches. Okay. Um, so Ty goes to the... Attacker? The player, and for us. Oh, player, okay. Um, um, so 14 would take full 18 damage, and the 16s would take 9 damage. Okay. And uh, 16s don't suffer a level of exhaustion, but the two 14s do. Um, I can pull that up pull real up. quick. I'm, I'm, you're right now. The 14 and the 16 are just for the element, the two elementals. Oh, okay. I haven't rolled for the orcs yet. What was the damage for the 16? Nine. Okay. And you said the 14 is exhausted. Uh, yeah, with one on. level. Are they immune to? Uh, oh, dis- so the. The earth elemental obviously doesn't, it, it looks like it takes a big hit, like, um, but it does not look any more tired than it once did. It doesn't, like, slouch or anything. So it's immune to exhaustion? It looks to be, have some sort of, yeah, yeah um, yes, immune, an immunity yes. for that. Yes. It looks to be heavier. <laughs> <laughs> this is very technical. Okay. Um, ooh, and the, the orcs roll an 18, so it looks like they save. They save. Uh, nine damage. Nine damage. Okay. The orcs already, despite saving, do not <laughs> do not look very good. <laughs> so that spell ooh, really drains them, so they all, um, <clears throat> they all, like, grip their axes that they just pulled off their back and the javelins that they're holding and just, ooh, and you hear some, like, grunting from their area over there um but uh yeah that'll be they all take get a little bit of damage and they're gonna when they start their turn they're gonna take it again okay um duncan calls out seeing that you have cast this spell and seeing that this thing rise up he says i don't know huh? <laughs> dang it the name dude i'm so sorry i'm so sorry it's, it's really hard for me to know a named character and not refer to them by their name so you're gonna uh, find it out it's, i mean unless he dies <laughs> you're gonna find what out is your name? name yeah take out his wallet. <laughs> uh he he says it looks like we've got some help boys thank you kind strangers i wave <laughs> he waves back he waves he has two axes and he like <laughs> Waves back with him. Says, "Let's take out these swine." Um, did I say I move forward thirty feet? I don't think you said that, but you. Okay, yeah, because I before, my before he does it, uh, Grim. Yes. What What did you just do over there? It's uh, sickening radiance. I see. Does it affect people who are your friends? I should find out. <laughs> The bush behind you is coughing a lot. <laughs> you just hear Burb say, I'm so tired. <laughs> I feel bad. I'm all it for will. dispatching an orc, but I don't want to jump in the middle of that. You should avoid it. Okay. Okay. All right, so Excellent next thought. up good is going to be Burb. Burb is going to call and say, good job, friend. That's all he's going to do with his turn. Thank you, Burb. Uh, Jack, it's your turn. I'm going to stand there. I threw all my daggers off the boat. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I think I had one left that was stuck in Gus. as he sailed away. Yeah. You've got uh, Eldritch Blast and all that. Oh, I do. I'm a warlock you do? now. Yeah. I took my first level of wizard and my first level of warlock. Okay, yeah. Bryce is multi-classing. He is taking, he's taking some levels. So your introspection and your time sailing that boat allowed you to really hone in on this 
this patron that in your backstory uh, has you know approached you. Um, hang on. I know exactly what I want to do. Crap, it's not on here. Are you sure Lightning Lure was a? I'm just gonna do Eldritch Blast then. We'll say that on your while you were sailing and everyone was asleep, like you had almost like an out of body experience where um, you like tranced out or whatever, and in that trance you were approached in the darkness on the sea by a great patron that you know touched you and said to you, Drak. Enjoy this new power <laughs> as you, you know, sailed. I kind of want it to not be obvious to Jack what that was. Sure. Just like he he is almost like he's come into a power he didn't know he had. Yeah, sure. So I was wrong about the sickening radiance. They don't take half damage if they succeed. Okay. <clears throat> so so, so good. only no only one guy took damage. The Earth Elemental, I believe. Okay, yep. So I'm going to pop them back. So the other guys didn't take any damage. Nope, no damage. Okay, cool. Will you, will you pass me that watermelon juice? Mm-hmm. Now you want some. All right, cool. So, so, Jack, so you didn't, so you maybe tranced out, and now you have this new power that you don't understand. Um, you weren't actually approached by a patron then. Does that sound good? That's the good game. Yeah. I, I didn't realize you were taking a level in Warlock, or I would have made a narrative situation there for you so you you tranced out a little bit you kind of zoned out and in your experience you now have this power that you don't know exactly Ooh. understand and are unsure a little bit how to use but you're finding that you want to you really like to shoot at these creatures and you feel that you could do that it, it is a pretty good situation for that since i can't reach them in any other way yeah so i'm going to use eldritch blast but he doesn't even know what that is so, sure. yeah. Do it. Do I, I make a ranged attack, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, ra with your spell modifier. Oh, poop. That means wisdom. No, it's charisma for warlocks. Oh, yeah, charisma. That missed. What was it? Four. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> you make two of them. Huh? It's Eldritch Blast is split into four beams. So you make a separate attack roll for each beam. That's, Even at level one? That's magic missile. No, that's Eldritch Blast. It's four beams of magic. Okay. Does it say that? Yeah. It might not say it in, in this. Your spell creates yeah. more than one beam when you reach higher levels. Two yeah. beams at fifth level. Yeah, and we're eighth level. But he's but only got I'm, one level of Warlock. That's not how that worked, though. It's not? I'm fairly certain not. It's character level fifth, I'm pretty sure. Well, that, seem, that seems like that would be a little bit... Like if I got into level 19 of one thing, then I was like, let me take level 20 at Warlock, then I would become a level then 20 Warlock and a level no, 19 else No, thing. you'd have one cantrip at max level. You'd Well, as a Warlock, you'd have two cantrips at max level. Because it's... Let me look. Yeah, I'm not really sure how this Because it's not... Work. If, you, if you're level 19 as a Rogue and you take one level of Warlock, you're not a 20th level Warlock. You're a level 1 Warlock, but you're a 20th level character, so you can cast a 17th level cantrip. Okay. Because it's based on... Gotcha. We're doing a quick little rule check here. Arlo, how are you handling all this? Um... I'm just kind of hanging back in the bush. I just the picture of like the the world pauses and a reporter comes in. So Arlo, mm -hmm. as your friends handle this combat and you prepare to help them out, I mean, how what what do you feel about the events of the day so far? Uh, well, you know, we've kind of rolled up into a new town and um, yeah. immediately we're about to kill a bunch of people. So yeah, it seems like they deserve it a little bit, but you never. Oh know. yeah, yeah, for sure, for sure. Um, I Arlo mean, they had well, it coming. As well, how are you dealing with the snow? Are you cold at all, or are you frigid? The I bush guess. is providing very little There's protection from the wind itself. Kendrick's level with bush is rarely do. Yeah, bush is rarely do. I mean, unless I you got about a hundred feet of them piled up on top of you. Yep. But uh, other than that, yeah, you know, I could light the bush on fire. You could. <clears> that could help. Warm. That could help. Uh, yeah. Then I wouldn't have a bush to hide in, though. Xena's found cantrips level with character, not with class. Sounds good. Because cool. spells are already set up into different levels anyway. Level 1, 2, hey, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I'm with you, brother. So I just, that's something I truly had no idea of. Now back to your regularly yes. scheduled program. Yep, the, the, spectral, the right. spectral reporter leaves Arlo. The other one <laughs> I rolled an unnatural 20. 
Okay, so, <laughs> so you hit him with snap. you hit him with one. Yeah. Who are you shooting at? Uh, the closest thing to you would be either two orc soldiers or a fire elemental. I'll go with the fire. Okay. What's your el- what's your eldritch blast look like? I guess it looks like it's just a magic force, so it, yeah. I guess it just looks like a distortion. Yeah. Kind of heading that way, almost like when you see like a sound blasting attack or something on okay. movies or whatever. Sure. And it hits for one d ten. Yeah, 1d10. So, they will not be resistant or immune to this effect. Seeks. Jeez, are you looking up the stats for these creatures? No, force is pure magic. Right. Nothing yeah. is going to be immune or resistant No, to yeah, that. absolutely. I agree with you, of course. I just don't want us to get into <clears> a thing where, like, <laughs> we, we all have those monster stats in front of us. All right, fire. How much damage? You said? Seeks. Six damage. Which one did you attack? The fire elemental closest to me. All right, so the, the force pushes into the fire elemental, and some of the fire gets pushed off of it. Can we and get like, it? What? Yeah, go. And the, the, it's like you push more oxygen into it, so the fire gets a little bit brighter on the outside, but it, it, it steps a little bit to the left and takes some of that damage. Can we get kind of a breakdown of positioning? Like, if of this course. is the gate and this is yep. us. Yep, I'll tell you. This? So imagine you're, sta- you're imagine you're the dwarf looking out <coughs> from the gate. Okay. On your left is a fire elemental. On your right in front of you is an earth elemental. Behind those and kind of going off to the right and off to the left are four orc boys. Okay. So all of them are visible to the dwarf. So from the middle, you would say, from the middle going right, you'd have earth elemental. Go back about 15 feet. You got, um, uh, 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 yeah, pretty much like that. Pretty so, much like what Josh has got written down there. I, kind of I, like I don't, two I don't want to go with drawings because that messed us up last time. Oh, did? Uh, I feel like it did because we spent too much time on the drawings. Like oh, yeah, yeah, right okay. Now. Yeah, we did, we did a lot of time on drawings. So, yeah, essentially like an L shape. Okay. So you've got the elemental and then orc, orc. All right. Sounds good? Yeah. Okay. So the orc boys are on our side. And the elementals are between the orcs and the. Dwarf. Well, see, you guys are perpendicular to it, so if oh, for okay. you to look at it, so you're gonna come up behind them. We're on the side. Yeah, right. you're on the side of them. So okay. if there's an L shape at the <clears throat> corner of the L, are your enemies? Gotcha. Orcs, uh, earth, fire, uh, dwarf over here. You guys down here. I got it. You guys are flanking them. We're closer to the earthy guy or the fire. You're closer to the fiery man. Fiery man. Fire man. All right, so uh, it is now the Earth Elementials' turn, unless Jack is done. Well, not done. You good? I'm done. Yeah, I'm good. All right. Uh, Constitution saving throw for the Earth Elemental. He rolls a, ooh, a 22. He saves. He saves, so he doesn't take any damage? None at all. All right. He is going to step forward towards the gate. Uh, He has 30 feet of movement speed, so he doesn't get quite up, up there yet. Um... He is going to. Whoa. That's cool. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to do um, something cool. No, I just didn't realize all the stuff that he could do. Uh, he is going to use what we call. I guess he's not going to do that. Before he goes, he's going to pick up one of the carts they came in on. And he's going to step 30 feet. And he's going to hurl it at the gate. But, sadly enough, when he picks up the cart and hurls it towards the gate, the cart doesn't quite make it all the way, and it doesn't collide with the gate. It like hits the ground and slides into a bit of the stone and a bit of the wood uh, on the side of the gate, and it bit of the crashes. Arrow. And so now there's some debris in front of the gate, um, and he is still 30 feet away from that gate. Uh, he is also now going to roar and just slam the ground. Um, and nothing's going to happen with that. That's just an anger thing. Um, cool. Okay, so it is now the dwarf's turn. Um, he is going to hop off of the uh, gate and use his... His axe is to slide down and slow his descent down the gate. Nice. Um, we're going to roll a little 
acrobatics on that. He rolls high enough to do that with a, with a fair bit of deafness. He does this everywhere he goes yep. in town. And he hits the ground, and then he is going to sprint uh, out what? to the right away oh, from you all I can't, I can't find and try to get around the uh, creatures. Going um, for the flank? Yes, he's going to try to get around and go to the back because he recognizes that these large creatures the one may not be something that he uh, can attack. <clears throat> he's not sure. So he runs around to the side, uh, and he gets around. He's approaching the flank on the other side. So this dwarf is now almost on the other side of you. No, not within range to attack anything, but he's moving around. Um, it is now the fire elemental's turn. The fire elemental uh, is going to... Um, let's see. Excuse me. Uh, creature... I need to remember these things. It's only a range of 15 feet now. Okay. All right. So the fire elemental is also going to go straight for the gate, uh, but he is going to use his use a dash to get all the way there. And he is right in front of the gate at roll this point. Yes, roll constitution before he does that. Uh, da, da, da. He rolls a 15. He saves. All right, he is able to save on that one. <clears throat> this spell um, is the suck. Well, they just they have rolled fairly well those last two times or three times. The orcs were really the ones that unreasonably <laughs> rolled well. Um, that's going to be the end of the fire elemental's turn as we continue placement. It is now Arlo's turn. All right. I want to kind of turn to Bird with Misiko. Y'all stay put, stay out of sight. Okay. Yes, of course. I will protect the I will protect the young bird child. All right. I'm stepping out. I'm gonna use. I'm gonna. I'm gonna cast call lightning. Okay. <laughs> cool. Oh, a little Pikachu action. A little something. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you want me to read it off? Or uh, yeah, I've never heard of this one. It's overpowered. Yeah, you have. Oh, I have um, not Melissa, heard it in a while. Melissa used it in Zenith's campaign. Okay. So it's not overpowered. Um, it is you concentration, 120 feet range, lasts for 10 minutes. Uh, a storm cloud appears in the shape of a cylinder that's 10 feet tall and 60 foot radius centered on a point you can see 100 feet 60 directly 60 foot you. radius. All right. So that covers everything. Well, it's it's 100 feet over us. Yeah. And it's a 60 foot wide like. It'd be 120 feet wide at 60 foot radius. 60 foot radius. Yeah. <laughs> so um, it's, And 10 feet thick. So it's like a disc of storm. Yeah. Your cloud has covered the whole battlefield. There you go. Uh, As you did when that, you cast the spell, choose good. a point you can see within range. A bolt of lightning flashes down from the cloud at a point. Each creature within five feet of that point must make a deck saving throw. Creature takes 3d10 lightning damage on a failed save or half as much on a successful one. On each of your turns until the spell ends, you can use your action to call down lightning in this way again, targeting the same point or a different one. Cool. Okay. So, a storm cloud forms above everyone. It was a nice day, it was, but it was, it was snowing lightly. The snow ceases. There's no more snow coming down over you all. You can look around and see snow on either on any side of this this disc of storm cloud. Duncan looks up and says, "We must really have some help today. Thank you, my new friends." Uh, and he, uh, you know, clanks his axes together a little bit. Um, and yeah, got prepare to use that spell. All right. So all the creatures as well down there look up like. Rrr. All right, I'm going for. I guess I'm going to go for the fire elemental. Okay. Let's see. Light him up. Is anybody within five feet of him? No. Cool, because he's on fire. Um, he's yeah. got to roll a <laughs> deck saving throw. He crit fails. Okay. <laughs> well, I so guess he, no, he he's going to take 16 doubled up. So, wait a second. Not it's three d ten, so you know what? Let me just roll it. It wouldn't be double. It'd just be regular. Eight. If I give somebody a disadvantage on an ability check. Does that also count for saving throws? No, because no. it's different ability. To, if he crit fails, it's not a. You have you would have to make a crit success for it to be double damage. Okay, <clears throat> so eight, ten, eight. So 26. 26 damage. So lightning bursts from the cloud and enters into the back of this <laughs> and through the top, of, like down his neck of this fire elemental. And fire is pressed out of there and you can see it course through this body of this fire guy. 
Uh, and how many? You said 26? 26. Arlo's out there on, on the battlefield just pointing at this guy like you. Yeah. <laughs> Um, and so, yeah, the, he takes it, and you hear you hear a fiery <laughs> as he takes the lightning, and he takes that damage, nice, big time. Fire and lightning. Yep. Any movement or anything else you're gonna Plasma do? Plasma elemental. Um, I just <laughs> yeah. want to get I just want to get a little bit closer to these guys. Okay. So Away from towards, the bush. I am towards Jack and Grim. I'm like right on the edge of the sickening radiance stuff. It would take you 30 feet to get to Grim, and you're pretty much near Jack at this point because Jack hasn't moved. I'm gonna, I'm gonna kind of get right next to where Jack is at. Okay. How far am I from the nearest person, like nearest enemy? Um, you would probably be about sixty feet at this point. Okay. Uh, it's gonna be Misiko's turn. He doesn't do anything. He just stays to protect Burb. Uh, it's now the archer's turn. Um, or the the first, yeah, both sets of archers actually are gonna take their turns. So they're going to knock arrows and fire at the orcs. Um. We'll say two fire at one orc, they're going to miss. Two fire at another orc, um, and they're going to... What's the math? There we go. Um, sorry. They're going to hit two of the orcs. Or actually, one of the orcs, excuse me. Um, I forget longbow D eight or D yeah, D eight. Yeah. All right, so they hit one orc. Um, they for some damage. Two arrows enter in one of the orc on the far side of you, the one closest to the dwarf that just leapt down, the farthest orc from you. Two arrows right into his chest. <laughs> He, nice. he roars. Um, they're the next set of archers are going to fire, and they are also going to. Ooh, both of them are going to hit their target, so they're firing at the two orcs closest to you. Um, they let's roll some damage. All right, so that one's going to <coughs> take some damage. Oh, I think I rolled that twice, actually, so that's not correct. And then we will... Okay, so the two orcs closest to you also, two arrows right in their chest. They roar out in pain and grab onto their chest as they grip their javelins with their other hands. Um, at this point, they really haven't... They know what you guys are doing a little bit, but they, they're not... They've, they haven't quite put together the fact that the storms and these all these effects are coming from you people on the side. They're very much focused on their orders at the gate. Um, it is now their turn, though. So they are going to... <coughs> yes, correct. That's right. Thank you for being on top of that. Thing, I do not remember those things very well. Uh, they fail. They fail that check. Cool. I got a feeling a couple of them about to die. <laughs> uh, 17 damage. Oh, yep. Yeah. So all four orcs fall to the ground. The two, the three of them that have arrows in their chest, they all like, as they're they're gripping their javelins, taking them out their back to go throw it. And as they do, they bring their arms forward and then just and slam into the ground with this sickening radiance um, and hit the ground. One of them, he get he goes to move and he's running towards the gate with his javelin. He makes it a good ten to fifteen feet before he plops in the dirt. And slides forward because he just couldn't handle the radiance as well. His constitution was low. Just couldn't handle um, it. So yeah, those four orcs go down dead. Now you just got two elementals to deal with. Um, it is now Grim's turn. How far are the elementals from me? From you, the fire elemental. So you move thirty feet forward. It moves sixty feet to the right. So we'll say it's probably like seventy-five feet from you at this point, towards the gate. Okay. Uh. I'm going to move that way. The earth elemental will say 30, 20. It's probably the same distance from you, but he's not quite at the gate. He's 30 feet from the gate. He's just farther away from you. Okay. Uh, I'm going to move my 30 feet that way, and I'm going to cast Sacred Flame upon the fire boy. What kind Aren't of you entering the sickening radiance? No, it's like up here. I'll move that way. I'm moving this way. 
Okay. So yeah, you're moving towards. It's uh, radiant. All right, radiant damage. Gotcha. Cool. All right. I just needed. I just wanted to know before. I thought that you were using flame thing on the flame thing. I got you. And I, and I figured you wouldn't um, be. I just wanted to get the confirmation. No. Yeah, you need to uh, yeah, what roll do I do? dicks. Roll one. dicks! Flame-like radiance descends on a creature that you can see within range. The target must succeed on a dexterity saving throw or take 1d8 radiant damage. The target gains no benefit from cover for this saving throw. Twice I've almost said, this fire elemental has more dexterity than you would think. Twice. He has rolled the one. <laughs> so he fails. Uh, oh, crap. Hold on. The Hold on. The flame comes down. He takes 13 damage because 13. at level 8 I had my wisdom modifier to cancer damage. Double nice. All right, so 13 damage. Very cool. The sacred flame comes right from the sky. Uh, it just, yeah, it just says to descend. So I'm imagining like 10 feet above their heads. It just oh. I'm, I pictured it coming like through like splitting the cloud for just a second like a like a cylinder coming through that cloud and hitting the okay. hitting the creature and then it closes back up okay man you do it the fire elemental is concerned nice nice Brian. so remind and, me guys like if if it's a spell and that we're casting like that and the enemy that we're targeting has to make a deck saving throw what what of ours are they trying to be spell casting spell casting spell casting Okay. DC, yeah. It's eight plus proficiency plus your spellcasting ability. Modifier. And yours tells you there at the bottom so yeah. what it would be. Yeah, Wisdom it, for it, both of us. Mine would be for you. Correct. Yes, sir. Correct, Amundo. I thought that's what it was, but uh, yeah. was, uh, I'm charisma. Well, this intelligence is one of those games. D and D is one of those games oh, where like every, every time you play, I forgot. there's I things that you don't more. remember. Yeah, it's like what was that? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's what it was. All right, next. Hold up. You not done? Not done. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna cast spiritual weapon. Okay. On the fire boy. Has a bonus action. Yep. You can cast it and swing it after casting this other spell. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because it's a cantrip. You All can. Right. You can't. You can't cast two bonus action spells in one turn, but you can cast a bonus action spell and a cantrip in one turn. Okay. I believe. But is it not? So to cast it and swing it is one action? Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. You create a it floating spectral weapon you. within range that lasts for the duration as so you cast a spell again. When you cast the spell, you can make a melee spell attack sure. against a creature within five feet And that's feet a cantrip. It. It's a, no, it's a spell. Okay. Sacred Flame is a cantrip. Cantrip, gotcha. Sorry. Yep. Uh, cool. Okay, let's see. I'm just casting it with the... Well, actually... Yeah, I'm just going to cast it with a second level spell slot. Okay. Um, range is uh, 60 feet. Who are we hitting? The fire boy. Okay. Uh, make a melee using spellcasting modifier. Which be... Uh, that right there. Oh shoot, this uh, boy got lots of speed actually. Will... Um, wait, what's my proficiency? Oh yeah, uh, 24. Yeah, 24 hit. Uh, 24 will definitely hit, yeah. <laughs> Where do you hit him with this hammer? Uh, I'll go for the left shoulder. Okay. <laughs> Coming uh, down on Five the... damage. All right, five damage on the boy. And how close did you move to him? Just 30 feet. Okay. So, gotcha. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. All right, so 30 feet, you move toward him, putting you, if you're 75 feet, he's four, you're 45 feet from him now. Okay. All right, cool. Um, that is the end of my turn. Cool, cool, cool. This spell also cancels out sickening radiance, so that's gone. Okay. Now, Burb is going to again call out, Good job, friends! Um, <laughs> it's now Jack's turn. <laughs> How far am I from the nearest fellow now? Uh, you are now Grim moved up 30, and then uh, essentially west 30, but to the right. West is to the right at this point, so we'll say to the right another 30. Um, you're probably, for the sake of rounding, we'll just say you're about 60, no, not 60, probably 100 feet from the fire elemental at this point, diagonally looking up towards so the gate. Fire elemental moved? Yeah, he moved to the gate. Okay. Then I'm going to... Probably about the same distance as the earth elemental. Okay. I'm going to move forward 30 feet. Okay. And cast Eldritch Blast again. Nice. <laughs> I'm getting all those memes about the warlocks. Like, say it, say the words. I cast Eldritch Blast. 
It's the only thing that I have that will reach that far. Yeah, got uh, you some range. So that's 14. To hit? Yeah. That will hit the fire boy? Yeah. Okay. And the other one will not. Okay. So you hit him for how many damage? 1d10. Roll it. A10. Okay. Nice, boss. All right. It is now the <coughs> Earth <coughs> Elemental's turn. Um, he is going to turn. Did I say I moved the 30 feet? You did. Okay. You went closer. You could use a bonus action to dash up there. I could. I'm going to do that as well. Okay. Mm. So you're going to use a bonus action to add another 60 feet to your movement? Just 30. Yeah, it's another it, another total 30. 60. Yeah, sorry. Yep. So you get 30 closer, so you're now uh, 30 feet. <laughs> is, that, is that correct? You're 30 feet from him? 40 feet. 40 feet, yeah. Excuse me. My bad. 40 feet from the creature, the fire elemental. <laughs> Sorry, I had to stretch. <laughs> to those uh, of you at home, that is what a stretch sounds the like. The earth elemental is going to turn to his left, move to the dwarf over there, and he is going to give him the smack. Um, Duncan, no. Uh, Duncan's going to get hit by the smack. Hmm? And... Dang it! <laughs> <laughs> the dwarf. This is the only character that's been unnamed in battle that, that we've had to deal with. I'm so sorry. Uh, he is going to get smacked with a big rock fist, um, and is going to do this damage that I'm about to tell you now. He's dead. Um, he's not dead, but he's not happy. Um, Especially All right. So yeah, he's going to take 13 damage. Hmm. He's a pretty beefy little prince, though. Um, I say prince not because he's a prince. Just, what like, I say? just like his name's not Duncan? Beef How many damage did I just say? 13. Yeah. Did somebody move the remote to the fans over there? Because they still own. All right, he takes one yeah. fist, poof, and then the, the earth elemental is going to smack him again, trying to remove the threat. Um, this time he is going to... Uh, get hit again. And die. <laughs> uh, and so Duncan, now no. he will take... <laughs> don't you dare say that. <laughs> oh boy, that's a lot of damage. Um, what would your brother say? Like at this point, okay. we know his entire backstory, his credit score, yeah. like so, everything. So Duncan like puts up his axes and you can see them glint and when the rock the creature punches into them, um, they they don't you know, like shatter or break like you would think they would. They seem pretty, you know, firm. And he like locks down, and, like it just smashes him kind of, and his feet press into the dirt. And he's just a pretty tough boy. And he takes those two smashes, um, but you know, his his head is bleeding now, and he's got like blood running down his arm and stuff. And his hands are are like bleeding as well from gripping his axes and trying to block these two giant hits from this giant creature. Um, it is now the fire elemental's turn. The fire elemental is going to run over um, so you're 40 feet from him mm -hmm. and Grim is 45 feet from him mm -hmm. the fire elemental is going to turn around from the gate noticing these threats taking two shots from Jack he is going to come into Jack's space and stand over him that's part of a fire form thing so I'm going to read this to you the el and you can tell me if I'm interpreting this correctly. The elemental can move through space as narrow as one inch wide without squeezing. A creature that touches the elemental or hits it with a melee attack within five feet of it takes five fire damage. We are not dealing with that right now. In addition, the elemental can enter a hostile creature's space and stop there. The first time it enters a creature's space on a turn, that creature takes five, or takes five fire damage and catches fire. Until someone takes an action, action to douse the fire, the creature takes five fire damage at the start of each of its turns. So the creature so the fire elemental is like on top of you. It has entered your space and catching and is catching you on fire, Jack. Would I be able to use my uncanny dodge reaction? Is that a reaction? Yes. And does it allow you to move in space or does it just allow you to move or like dodge? It, it allows me to dodge in place. Okay, so you would essentially based on what I'm based on how I'm interpreting that, you're not actually moving using movement. You would be in the same essentially area and, and dodging a move rather than like yeah. jumping out of the way. So I would say that doesn't really affect it here. Well, Does that make sense? Rules is written I take half the incoming damage. Can I just say that like I don't let the actual flames themselves touch sure, me? Sure, the heat hurts you. That's fine. Yeah. yeah, so as he goes to move and stop <laughs> in place, 
you're able to instead of be like doused in fire, you like push out of it a little bit, and it's I like need to put just up my coat. Yeah. Or so we'll say you're using your uncanny dodge. You're not actually set ablaze. The heat just gives you that five fire damage, okay. and you're not actually on fire. So you'll take five fire damage, um, and then he is going to attack. So being within five feet of Grim, he's going to attack Grim, and then he's going to attack you as well, Jack. He's yeah. got multi attacks. We're not in the same... You're not in the same place. You're just... The, the numbers of differences. Excuse me. He's going to attack you, Jack. All right. Sorry, I, I was... I, I, 40 and 45 feet. I was just thinking you guys were that close, but you're not. You're absolutely right. I, I was standing next to Jack, but... I moved. Jack okay. moved. Yeah. Yep. So just Jack is going to take this fire. I think that's what you were thinking somebody was next to you. Maybe so. My brain is... There's a lot of brain going on. A lot but, of brain. Or maybe none. <laughs> <laughs> um, he rolls a 17... And uh, ooh, a twenty, a unnatural twenty. Do both of those hit, or just one? Seventeen, twenty. No, they both hit me. Okay, um, you're going to take some fire damage if the target is a creature or flamm flammable object. It ignites. <laughs> so now you will be ignited. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> I did not. My my dastardly plan on. was not to work until Jack is on fire, but it seems to have worked out that way. All right. So you're going to take two d six plus. Um, you're gonna take eight fire damage. All right. Um, and oh, it could be five or one d10, but we normally roll, so I'm gonna roll a d10 for the fire damage. Um, and you're, on your unless you get put out dodge. before your next turn. So right now it's just eight fire damage. So you took five plus eight because I didn't say I was gonna roll for that first five, but from now on I'll roll the d10 for the flame. Um, so 5 plus 8, 13 damage total on this turn. All okay. right. Um, it is now Mitsuko's turn. He's not going to do anything. The archers are going to fire their arrows. All of their arrows fire, uh, and they connect with these creatures, but the, fire, the four arrows that hit the fire creature, uh, the fire elemental, they just pass through, and on the other side are charred uh, shafts, and the ones that hit the rock elemental, they just bounce right off. Um... It is now Grim's turn again. Oh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> uh, how far away is the Earth Elemental from me? Uh, boop, 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 boop. He would be. You before you. Did he go? Oh no, you Arlo didn't. Sorry, Arlo, it's your turn. You were squeezed in there with the fire. It's your turn right after Fireboy. Cool. I want to do Zappy Zap. Zappy. Zappy. Zap. Battle boy. map quickly. Yeah. Because people have moved around. There has been some much. movement. Don't hit the fire one. Mm -hmm. The, the really the okay. only issue are the fire one is near Jack and yeah. the earth one is near Duncan. Okay. Yeah. So if you attack either of them, you're gonna hit either of them. I'm gonna do it. Okay. I'm going for the earthy boy. All right. Earthy boy. <laughs> Good luck, Duncan. <laughs> He's he seems sturdy. He'll yeah, be all right. It's fine. He's the beef prince. Hey, oh, hey. Dex. Never mind. <laughs> Sorry. Dex saving throw. Yeah. Good choice. And it's within five feet, so like he'd have to be like right up on top of him. Yeah, so six. Serious dwarf is no, there. Yeah, he's with it. Duncan's nope, within five feet. <laughs> dwarf's within five feet. Nice. Because okay. he just attacked him. Dex? Oh, I'm gonna do a dex for that guy as well. Ooh, that was a weird roll. Um, what am I trying to be? I don't think he's. Fifteen. Um, he doesn't. Neither of them save. So, so you said ability checks and saving throws are not the same. This is correct. Nope, neither of them save. So each of them takes well, ability check is like. Dice. Can you lift this thing? The saving throw Seven, is like. Can you avoid being crushed two, by this? So we got nine and twelve. Twelve damage for everybody. Twelve damage for everybody. All right. And this is lightning damage, not thunder damage, correct? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Lightning and yeah. damage. Okay. It's completely and different. They are. <laughs> what? Can I do a cantrip as a bonus action? I forget. No, because that's your action. Okay, that's what I thought. If the spell is a bonus action, you can toss out a cantrip yeah. as an action. Okay. okay, folks, with that lightning strike, we're going to start combat again in the next episode no. uh, to finish out combat and, and begin the next episode. Thank you so much for listening to this one. We hope you enjoyed it. Please be sure to, if you're on YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe. Uh, the cliffhanger of the end of combat on this one, we will handle it. We are recording that in the same session, so don't worry. We're not going to get too many things wrong, hopefully. Uh, and we will see you in the next episode. Please remember that we love you very much. Toodles. Later.